Welcome to the St. Michael Weekday Meditations. My name is Chris Garada, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is blessing. Once you've been transformed by God's love, you can't help but want to share that love with others. This Easter, let's learn how to bless one another by sharing the grace and love of Christ with our friends and neighbors. Joining Christians everywhere during this Easter season, we proclaim with joy, Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him, Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 7. Jesus said, Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, Let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give it a stone? Or if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. Here ends the reading. Jerry Greenfield and Ben Cohen were childhood friends who bonded over their love of eating over attending gym class in grade school. After graduating high school, Jerry attended college before unsuccessfully applying for medical school, while Ben enrolled and dropped out of several colleges, never truly finding his calling. Now, when these two friends reconnected and crossed paths again, they were both feeling a bit lost professionally. They each decided to take a $5 course on how to make ice cream, which led them to open an ice cream shop in Burlington, Vermont, inside an old, shabby gas station. And for Ben and Jerry, the rest is history. Their ice cream became so popular that they had stores across the country and in 2000 sold the business and became multimillionaires. Ben and Jerry's story is just one of countless stories of people with an entrepreneurial spirit who work hard and raise themselves up to become incredibly successful. That kind of success is what our culture holds up as inspirational, as the goal everyone should have. This idea of being successful, of achieving in big ways, is so much a part of our cultural DNA that most of us don't even question it. And yet, we know that most people don't hit the ball out of the park, so to speak. Most people just work to keep their trains on the track and keep moving forward. And all of us, at some point in our lives, need help. But how many of us are good at asking for help? Asking for help, asking really for anything, is a challenge for lots of people. In our culture, being self-sufficient is seen as a virtue. Being able to raise ourselves up on our own with our own hard work and by our own merit is seen as being truly successful. The idea of being self-made and self-sufficient is fundamentally aspirational, and so we struggle a lot with the passage we just heard. Today's gospel lesson comes at the end of Jesus' incredible Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus delivers a long, thorough, inspirational sermon to a very large crowd. In the sermon, Jesus addresses a wide array of ideas with hosts of wisdom sayings about how we are to live our lives. Almost every verse has a new nugget for us, but today I want to focus on verses 7 and 8. Let's hear them again. Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus is very clear about how God wants us to be in relationship with him. Jesus tells his students to ask for what they want, to ask for help and for guidance, and that God will open the door for us. This is an incredible teaching 
for many reasons, not least of which is that we are meant to ask for help. Now, it's so easy to question this teaching or to think away the ramification of this teaching. We might like that Jesus is encouraging his followers to ask for help because we appreciate that God wishes to be helpful. But when we actually get to a place in our lives when we need help, we can turn away very quickly and not make the ask. What if we make an ask now and we need something more later? Or what if we ask too frequently and become a nag to God? Or worst, what if we ask and God doesn't answer? The doubts around this passage can swirl away from us if we aren't careful, which is why I think we need to make things a bit simpler. This passage roots itself in the basic idea of prayer. Prayer is how we build our relationship with God. Prayer is not a transactional exercise where we do the right thing and say the right words in the right way in the right order to get the desired effect. Instead, prayer is when we submit to God. Prayer is when we exercise the faith that we have in God, that God loves us and wants to be in relationship with us, and that through prayer, we can be closest to God. And even more than that, prayer is when we ask God for help. Now, let me be clear. Prayer does not inform God of anything he doesn't already know. Rather, prayer is when we take a leap of faith and talk with God, asking for what we need. The ask is important because in the ask, we humble ourselves. In the ask, we become vulnerable to God and vulnerable in our faith. In the ask, we allow ourselves to let go of the worldly push towards success and achievement and instead yoke ourselves to the infinite good power of a loving God. Now, Jesus knew that we wouldn't want to ask for help or to ask God for aid or blessing or healing. And so he made a point in the most significant sermon of his ministry to tell us to ask anyway. Consider what asking God for help means to you and consider making an ask today. Pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone will help us grow. And how better to grow than to grow with God? Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.